Hi guys, in this video, I'll be talking about the Thomas splint, one of the most common splint used in orthopedic emergencies, right? So who designed it? The Thomas splint was basically designed or made by Hugh Owen Thomas in the year 1876, right? So H.O. Thomas was the person behind this idea of developing this Thomas splint and he designed this to stabilize the knee for his own wife and she was suffering from tuberculosis of the knee joint. So when she was suffering, he had an idea to make some splint which can give stability to the knee and keep the knee in the resting phase, right? So he designed it for subacute inflammation of the knee joint for his own wife and that was in the year 1876, right? What was the whole idea behind this? How this was basically made? So what are the components of the thomas splints? Let's talk about the components of the thomas splint. So components or you can say the parts of the thomas splint, how it has been designed. So basically the thomas splint, the upper part, it has got a ring, right? This ring is not parallel to the ground. It is slightly slanted, right? It has got an angle to the parallel. And how much is the angle? The angle between the ring and these two bars, you see, there is an outer bar and there is an inner bar. How do you say which one is the outer bar and the inner bar? The outer bar always has a little bit of angulation over here like this. Right? It will have a little bit of angulation over here like this. This angulation is approximately 2 inches below the ring area. So this is approximately approximately 2 inches. You can say simply 5 centimeter below the ring. And this angulation over here, it is there to accommodate the greater trochanter. Okay? So this side becomes your lateral side. So to accommodate the greater trochanter. Now this ring which I said is not parallel to the ground this ring makes an angle of approximately 120 degrees with the inner ring uh, with the inner bar basically so ring makes an angle of 120 degrees with the inner bar now why this angulation is required now if you see the groin area if you see this groin area if this doesn't make an angle if this is not slanted you won't be able to fix it properly here in the groin area right that is the whole idea why the ring should be slanted and it should have an angle so that it can accommodate properly into the groin area. So outer ring, the uh, outer part of the ring, the bar on the outer side is slightly longer as compared to the inner side of the bar which makes an angle of 120 degrees with the ring. So outer bar is identified by the presence of an angulation which is approximately 5 centimeters or 2 inches below the padding area, the ring area and that is to accommodate the greater trochanter. Right? So how, uh, okay, the point here, this lower end, it is uh, designed in a W-shaped fashion, right? It is designed in a W-shaped fashion and this distal end, basically, it joins the two side bars and it can be used to pull some uh, traction over here by tying at this area, right? So this, if, I, if we uh, just understand how it has to be applied, let's see that also. So how to choose a thomas splint? That is one big question and it can be asked in your viva also. You are shown a thomas splint, you identify it and then the examiner asks you, how will you measure the length, appropriate size of the thomas splint as per the patient's requirement? Okay, so now do remember, how do we have to choose? How we will decide that what is the best size for any of the patient? So first thing to be identified is, how much should be the circumference of the ring? Okay, so what we do, this, let's suppose, if this is the left side and if it is injured, obviously we don't want to hurt the patient, okay? So if the left side is injured, what we can do, we can measure the circumference of the normal side or the right side, okay? So how we measure it? The point one is, you have to measure the circumference of the thigh. Measure the circumference of the thigh. You have to measure the circumference of thigh immediately below immediately below the gluteal fold and the ischial tuberosity below the gluteal fold and ischial tuberosity right that's how you have to measure it so you can measure that on the normal side and then if the swelling is high if the swelling is much in the injured limb then what you do is you will add two inch you will add two inch to it that is approximately again five centimeter to it so let's suppose if you measure the circumference, it comes out to be somewhere around 25 centimeters. For example, then we'll add 5 centimeters to it, that is 30. So circumference of the ring here, which will be measured from here, 
from the topmost part ischial fibrosity and the below the gluteal area this one this should be measured like this only so normal limb plus 2 inches so that will determine the circumference of the bar that is the thomas splint okay then what about the length so how to measure the length length is from this crotch area from the central part area from this crotch to the heel we measure to the heel okay and whatever comes we add approximately 6 to 9 inches to it then you'll have to add 6 to 9 inches to it which somewhere comes around somewhere roughly comes around 15 to 23 centimeters like this okay so we measure from the crotch area we measure from the crotch area and then we go to the heel crotch to the heel so this length is basically the length of this inner bar this length is basically the length of the inner bar how much that should be it should be approximately from crotch to the heel plus 6 to 9 inches so that the limb basically can be appropriate in the length the bar is appropriate in the length and then you get this much of area at least where you can put the other bandages trappings if required to pull the traction and maintain the length of the limb so that should be this much longer right so uh, do remember this it's a very very basic thing very very basic splint which is asked in almost every university exam so thomas splint ho thomas tuberculosis of knee now used for the fracture shaft of the femur available in all the orthopedic emergencies as well as ortho wards and then you can use it to stabilize the fracture shaft of knee by just giving it the appropriate size of the thomas splint and what is the meaning of appropriate size we have talked about it measure the circumference of the groin area from ischial fibrosity area add 2 inches to it measure the length from the crotch area to the heel area add 6 to 9 inches to it that should be the length of the medial bar okay and that's how you give the appropriate size thomas splint uh, very soon i'm planning to make the a short video on different types of traction system used in orthopedics so give me your inputs would you like to have that video you know uh, that will be helpful for your university exam as well right thank you so much for watching this video